Welcome back to Quiz Guides. If you're new here, Quiz Guides are short crash course style videos to help beginner, novice, and intermediate players learn more about different quizable topics. Today, I'm going to be talking about model organisms. Uh, so first I'm gonna talk about E. coli. Uh, so E. coli is a uh, gram negative and rod shaped bacteria that is uh, naturally found in the large intestine. And um, it is a common cause of food poisoning, uh, especially in undercooked meat and beef, specifically beef. And um, its serotype is uh, O157 uh, colon H7. And uh, a serotype is basically just a specific classification that helps distinct, uh, distinguish between different microorganisms. Um, so that's like a common uh, clue that comes up for E. coli is that's that serotype of O157 H7. Um, another thing about E. coli is that it can generate vitamin K. And uh, E. coli has been one of the more popular organisms that have been used for microbiology and recombinant DNA research. And that's because it has a very fast reproduction rate. It can do so in about 20 minutes. Uh, so that's made it a good, a helpful organism to use for research um, in microbiology studies. Uh, e. coli has been used in a lot of experiments or uh, works by various scientists. Uh, and oftentimes those are used as clues in early on, early on in the question, they'll talk about um, how E. coli was used in one experiment and then how in another experiment it was used this way. Uh, so I'm just gonna talk about some uh, that come up uh, more commonly. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is Mesels and Stahl. And uh, E. coli was used in this experiment in the Mesels and Stahl experiment uh, to prove semi-conservative replication of DNA. It was also used in the Jacob Minot experiments, which is another experiment. And uh, in these experiments, they were trying to study the lac operon. So E. coli was used to study the lac operon. Um, then it was used in the Lederberg Tatum experiments. Um, and uh, in those experiments, E. coli was used to demonstrate exchange of genes by conjugation. Next, it was used in the Hershey Chase experiment along with a T2 bacteriophage. Uh, to basically prove that DNA uh, was made of, or is the hereditary material um, rather than the protein. Um, some more sort of advanced or obscure, less commonly asked about experiments that E. coli was used in. Um, so there was experiments that were done by Cohen and Boyer, and uh, they used E. coli in a plasmid slash restriction enzyme. Uh, they, they basically used E. coli as a plasmid slash restriction enzyme in their experiment uh, to conduct it. And the actual experiment itself is not necessarily as important. It's just the fact that Cohen and Boyer um, used this specific organism as a plasmid restriction enzyme. And actually, you can read a little bit about um, what kind of plasmid that was, a little bit more details about that. But once again, that's uh, quite advanced and you know maybe a bit more nationals or higher level uh, packets. Um, and then lastly, E. coli was used by Richard Lenski at Michigan State um, to study the long-term evolution of 12 populations. And that's uh, a, a fairly important one that comes up early on in E. coli toss-ups, the experiment by Richard Lenski at Michigan State. All right, so I'm gonna talk about a few other important clues slash buzzwords for E. coli. Uh, so notable genes in the E. coli bacteria encode lactose permease and beta galactosidase, which are two enzymes. Um, and these enzymes help break down lactose into glucose and galactose. Uh, uh, you, might, you might've heard of Shiga toxins, which are produced in vi virulence, virulent strains of E. coli. And Shiga toxins come up a lot in uh, E. coli toss-ups. Um, and lastly, E. coli is a common source of urinary tract infections. All right, the next microorganism, uh, excuse me, not microorganism, model organism I'm going to talk about are fruit fly, also known as Drosophila melanogaster. Uh, typically, you'll like see it on, it'll, you'll be, it'll be written in a toss-up uh, answer line as D melanogaster. Like the D will be underlined in Drosophila. So you don't have to say the whole thing, you can just say fruit fly. Um, and there was, and this organism was a major, organism used in genetic studies. And it was first used by Thomas Hunt Morgan. And uh, it was used primarily to discover the crossing over of chromosomes and how sex-linked genes work um, in organisms. And uh, you might've heard of the whole white eyes versus red eyes uh, species of fruit flies. So that's basically uh, that whole process. It, basically Morgan was trying to understand how that process works um, in different organisms. Some other clues about fruit flies. Uh, so male fruit flies have sex combs on their forelegs, 
Um, there are important mutants, which include things like ebony, eyeless, antinopedia, and dumpy are different types of fruit flies. So ebony, eyeless, antinopedia, and dumpy are different types of mutant fruit flies. Um, then there are, then uh, in these fruit flies, there are larvae actually, specifically fruit fly larvae. They contain these polyteen chromosomes in their salivary glands, um, which are a helpful, re or, or, or they are an important research tool um, because they're easily removable. So uh, these polyteen chromosomes can be easily studied in the lab. Uh, fruit flies also possess homeotic and Hox genes uh, for embryo development. Uh, and analogs of, of these genes have actually been found in vertebrates. So that's pretty important, homeotic and Hox genes. And uh, additionally, the fruit fly is the first organism that has been found to have bicoid, hunchback, and sonic hedgehog genes. So uh, the thing you'll notice about fruit flies, they have a lot of interesting names for their different genes and that can get easily tossed up. Uh, I'll talk about a couple more in the next slide, but um, so there's bicoid, hunchback, and sonic hedgehog. Like, you know, those are a bit more uh, distinct and they're, they're a bit more memorable. So uh, they might be tossed up at some point. So it's important to know some of the stranger named genes because for one, they're, prob they're probably easier to remember. And also they're a bit uh, unusually named so they could come up uh, more frequently. Uh, they also contain, uh, fruit flies also contain two proteins. One's called a sevenless and one's called the bride of sevenless. So those are two also sort of stranger or you know unique names for proteins. So sevenless and bride of sevenless are also uh, come up in a fair amount of toss ups or maybe earlier on. Uh, these clues are these um, clues about different genes and different proteins will, will come up early on um, at the regular state level and maybe at the middle part of a nationalist toss up. Some other clues about fruit flies. Uh, so, some other genes, like I mentioned before, um, in addition to bicoid hunchback and sonic hedgehog, there are the Ken and Barbie genes. And there's a, a other um, interesting ones that you might be able to find, but these are just some that um, stick out, st uh, stood out to me that I wanted to share with you. So, yeah, uh, the Ken and Barbie genes are some other uh, notable genes in the uh, fruit fly. Uh, the fruit fly was uh, used to prove the concept of genetic linkage by a Columbia student named Alfred Sturdivant. And uh, he actually worked in a room that was named for the fruit fly. So that might be a clue that comes up. Uh, he worked in a room uh, that was named for the fruit fly and he helped prove the concept of genetic linkage. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, crossbreeding between red-eyed and white-eyed fruit flies basically helped Morgan to um, you know, advance genetic studies and what we knew about genetics at that point. And he was able to find an exception to Mendel's law of independent assortment. And um, the law of independent assortment is one of Mendel's laws of inheritance. And basically it states that the alleles of multiple genes are sorted into gametes in an independent matter. But, uh, in the studies of the fruit flies, Morgan was able to find that that's not exactly the case. That's not always the case, um, especially in the case of the fruit fly. All right, next I'm gonna talk about C. elegans. So C. elegans is a, nemat is a nematode, which is uh, the phylum of phylum, which uh, refers to roundworms. Um, so it's a round roundworm model organism, and it's often used in development studies and apoptosis studies um, since the lineage of all of its cells. Um, and uh, what's interesting is all 959 of its of the somatic cells in adult C. elegans organisms can actually be traced back to the zygote, which is kind of interesting. C. elegans was actually the first multicellular organism to have its entire genome sequenced and connectome mapped. And the connectome is just the uh, uh, collection of all the neuronal pathways in an organism. So it was the first organism to have its genome sequenced and connectome mapped. Um, and additionally, the inhibiting of gene expression by RNA interference, which you might hear it uh, abbreviately, abbreviated as RNAi. Um, so the, the inhibiting of gene expression of RNA interference was actually first understood in this organism. So C. elegans uh, was, they, they, they based, the scientists used C. elegans to understand how this works, um, how this inhibition works by RNA interference. Some other clues about um, C. elegans. So 191 cells of C. elegans undergo apoptosis during its development. So uh, that's sort of a, you know, you may not, you might, you might think that's not very uh, specific clue about C. elegans, but this might not be a clue that you initially buzz on. It might be a clue that confirms that they're talking about C. elegans. So you might find some like a middle part of a toss-up. Uh, 
some, and some, some information about different people that specifically study this organism. So the use of it in developmental studies was actually popularized by a scientist named Sidney Brenner. Um, and then the two people that won uh, the Nobel Prize for their work on uh, studying gene, in, uh, excuse me, gene, in, gene expression inhibition by RNA interference uh, were Andrew Fire and Craig Mellow. And they won that Nobel Prize in 2006. All right, so lastly, I'm going to talk about yeast. So uh, Baker's yeast, uh, which, is, which scientifically is known as Saccharomyces cerevisiae, uh, was the first eukaryote to have its genome sequenced. And uh, Baker's yeast is a single-celled single fungus, and it can grow anaerobically, uh, can carry out fermentation, and it can also reproduce asexually by budding. Um, as you know, yeast does not necessarily need oxygen to carry out normal uh, processes, and therefore it can um, do things like budding and fer fermentation. Um, what's interesting about yeast is that genes from other, other eukaryotic organisms can actually be inserted into yeast artificial chromosomes, also known as YAC or YACs, um, in order to help map and um, understand expression in yeast cells. And these YACs were actually used for mapping human genes in the Human Genome Project. Another interesting fact about these YACs is they can actually hold up to 1 million base pairs. So that kind of makes them an affecting mapping tool for different uh, organisms. Um, and as I mentioned, they were used for human genes in the Human Genome Project. Um, another interesting thing about yeast is that it can be used to test the interactions between different proteins um, in, a in a process famously known as two-hybrid screening. Two-hybrid screening is pretty important. Um, it comes quite often in toss-ups about yeast or possibly fungi. Uh, Oftentimes, so you might see fungi as tossed up more than yeast itself, but uh, clues might be referring to yeast as a specific type of this organism or this phylum, or uh, this kingdom, it's not, not phylum, excuse me, this kingdom. And so uh, they might, they might uh, talk about two hybrid screening in a specific organism in this kingdom, and then they'd be looking for fungi. And uh, the specific organism they're referring to would be yeast. Great, and some other clues um, and buzzwords about yeast. So the presence of yeast can be tested with a compound uh, called methylene blue. Uh, the Saccharomyces genus growth is inhibited by a compound called cyclohexamide. And what I, that compound that I mentioned earlier, Baker's yeast, also known as Saccharomyces cerevisiae, is the variety that helps ferment beers. And uh, some other notable species of yeast that you might hear in uh, possible toss-ups are pombe, boulardi, and uh, candida albicans. Candida albicans is probably the most famous out of all these uh, out of these three that I listed. Um, but uh, you might also hear the other two in higher level toss-ups, maybe at the uh, Rags Plus or uh, Nationals level. But candida albicans is actually sometimes tossed up, or not? Excuse me, not tossed up, but asked as a part of a bonus uh, at the Rags level. So those are some uh, important, um, it's, it's, it's sort of helpful to know some types of, some specific, excuse me, some specific types of yeast organisms because they may, they may say um, an example of this organism is candida albicans or boulardii. So that will help you get yeast or even fungi if they're talking for kingdom. So yeah, that is it for model organisms. Be sure to check out the next video on Pillars of Islam. Thanks for watching.